did the Iron Lady last year and we had to turn Meryl Streep into Margaret Thatcher, which was great. We did uh, Mandela, uh, when me and Stephen, we turned uh, Idris Elba into Nelson Mandela. So th those, those are really good, interesting challenges, you know. And this was in that bracket, really. It's an interesting project, introducing the H.G. Wells character into the War of the Worlds stage show and uh, aging him up into uh, two different ages, mid mid uh, 50s, well, 53 and then uh, late 70s. What we do is look at the reference of the real photographs of H.G. Uh, Wells as he really was when he's in his early 30s uh, and then his 50s and then late 70s. He put on weight, uh, he got considerably heavier when he was uh, in his 50s so we decided to you know stick with what really happened to H.G. Wells um, and he's got a particular shaped moustache you know so we all talked together and designed uh, you know the look of the moustache as he as he progressed through the ages and uh, really just uh, did as much as we could from uh, the real photographs uh, so when he's in his 70s H.G. Wells had these crazy eyebrows, big bushy eyebrows, uh, uh, so we, we uh, introduced that into, uh, into the mix and tried to stick with real look of H.G. Wells as much as, you know, uh, uh, making it work on Callum's face. Yeah, it's trying to find a balance. I mean, Callum doesn't look exactly like H.G. Wells, but there's enough of a semblance, so it's taking Callum and then adding H.G. Wells' features on top to a degree and uh, yeah, with the final finishing touches of hair and costume, you know, I think you really get the feel of looking like the reference pictures that we were looking at of the real guy. Yeah, so we were looking at things like his eye bags, you know, and, and how, how they, you know, because H.D. Wells had these particular eye bags, so we, we were looking at the reference photographs and turning, you know, Callum wouldn't age exactly like we've aged him. You know, if we were doing a naturalistic aging on Callum, uh, we wouldn't necessarily give him heavy eye bags, whereas we did in this, because that's what H.G. Wells had. So there's a bit of uh, straying away from what would what we would think Callum would naturally age and, and adding in a bit of character as well. At the beginning, obviously, we, were, we did a couple of tests to see whether <clears throat> it was necessary to have the full face prosthetics and um, you know whether just a bit of old age stage makeup would have been enough, but actually looking back, that it just didn't have the same effect at all so it's better that we have gone for the prosthetics and obviously it's a massive challenge for me and Stephen on tour to get it done and and live and in a time limit and stuff like that well that that was that was the trickiest bit really initially and uh, i think uh that was just going along to the meetings and having conversations with uh damien the producer and uh and uh jeff and just trying to work out was it physically doable, you know, was it possible? Because there's 17 shows, uh, the prosthetics are not reusable, so you're using a new prosthetic every day. So on a, on a film budget, people expect that, but on a theatre budget, you wouldn't necessarily expect to spend money on each prosthetic for every single performance, because it's destroyed when you take it off. So really, we had a, a few meetings early on to, to work out physically, could it be done in the time and, and, and in the budget as well, you know, but we crossed all those, you know, uh, we, we answered all those questions in the first couple of meetings that we had. And then for us, it was just like, you know, me and Stephen sitting there thinking, you know, do we think we can get stick a full old age makeup on in 30 minutes? That includes everything, uh, wig and moustache and eyebrows and full, full age prosthetics. And then Amy and Stephen did it today in 32 minutes. So um, usually a makeup like this would take about three hours um, uh, when you're doing it for a movie. But the final look is still film quality and the quality of the prosthetics, aren't they, as they have to be... Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could film pretty close, close on, on this. On the screen, yeah. so. And still, it would still, it would still pass. It makes me think that we need to do our film prosthetics quicker. <laughs> <Back then. laughs> but then you'd end up with the, the thing of it sweating off around the mouth yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the you know, time so. hasn't been taken for them. Yeah. Yeah. Stage one... No prosthetics. Really no no prosthetics. prosthetics, just um, moustache and uh, sideburns. And stage two... Stage two is the 53-year-old. That's a full face piece and neck. And so that's just one prosthetic piece, one, isn't it? One prosthetic piece and two hands. And then stage three is uh, we take the face off, we take the, the, the cheeks and neck, one piece off, and we add another one on, which is more advanced, older, a nose and a forehead. And then on top of that, we've got wig, eyebrows and moustache. Quite a lot to get done in. 26 minutes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, uh, the change from 
the middle age stage, 53 years old, to the oldest stage in his late 70s is the shortest amount of time as the, uh, as the script goes. So that's the biggest challenge. You know, once an actor's used to wearing it, uh, they don't, you know, they think it's delicate, but actually it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy once it's glued on. So once they get comfortable with it, and that's part of the process really of teaching the actor that actually not to be constrained by the prosthetics. And then what I usually find is once actors are wearing that, that so once they're actually doing the stuff, once they're actually playing the part, they forget all about wearing the prosthetic and just go into it really. Also the weight's in the right places, isn't it? So where he smiles, you know, there's a natural fold there. We're not constricting that. His smile moves with the material that's glued on top and sculpted into that shape to match him with his own lines. I think a lot of people who, because it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of people who do what we do tend to be quite dedicated, you know. You, it's like if you want to be a filmmaker, you've, you've got to be dedicated, you've got to pursue your goal quite strongly and you've got to work really hard, you know. So people who decide to do this as a career tend to be absolutely certain that that's what they want to do. Most of the people I know do, especially in the prosthetic side of things, who want to sculpt characters and mould them and they, they've they just got this desire that, 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 that there's no question about what job they would want to do.